So in my last couple of videos, we've been talking about the best DSLR lenses for the best price. And one of those lenses has been the 50 millimeter F 1.4, which is the one that I have here. And we're gonna be talking specifically about this uh, Nifty 50, as some people call it, why I like it so much, and a couple of the major flaws that prevent it from being my favorite lens. I'm giving away a $25 Amazon gift card. All you have to do to enter is one, like this video, two, subscribe to this channel if you're not already, three, turn on post notifications for this channel, and four, leave a comment down below telling me what you would do with those 25 bucks. So I got a comment in just a couple of days ago by Gunther VM, and he says, I've tested the cheaper 50 millimeter F1.8, ISSTM lens uh, versus the f1.4 which is the one that I have and the f1.8 is much sharper than the f1.4 so I actually don't own the 50 millimeter 1.8 I only own the 1.4 because I didn't think there would be too much of a difference but this guy's saying that it is much sharper which is pretty interesting because uh, the first dislike I guess about the 51.4 is um, compared to like my other lenses and like the L lenses it's just not that sharp. I know that generally speaking when you have a wider aperture it's not going to be as sharp as when you like are at f4, f8 and this lens definitely seems a little soft it's uh, difficult to tell quite what's in focus when you're at uh, 1.4 but honestly I don't shoot at 1.4 that much because it is so wide you're gonna get so much light coming in um, generally I'm at 1.8 or 2 or whatever. Continuing on with the comment he says if you want to upgrade from the 1.8 then go to the f1.2, which is an L lens. It's also a thousand dollars. I've talked about this before. If you're unfamiliar with the Canon Nifty 50 line, 1.8, 1.4, 1.2. The 1.8 is about a hundred dollars, um, all made out of plastic. The 1.4 has quite a bit of metal parts and better construction, I've heard, but apparently uh, sharp. And a couple of other negative things I'm gonna be talking about in just a second. 1.4 is about $300, $350. The 1.2 is the L series, that means it's gonna be the best built and the sharpest and everything. That's $1,000. As always, links are down below if you wanna find out more about each lens. Even Gunther here says that the Nifty 50 is amazing, especially for the price. I have to agree with you. He also brings up an interesting lens I don't think I've talked about. It's the Sigma 18-35 f 1.8. Probably one of the best lenses out there for APS-C. So I've also not tested that lens, and it's going to be quite a bit wider, um, and you're going to get a nice zoom length. F1.8, that sounds like a pretty good lens. I'm going to definitely link that down below. Okay, so back on topic, we're talking about the Canon 50 1.4. We've already discussed how it's not the sharpest lens. Uh, definitely have to say, yeah, it's not super sharp, but it's not like bad. It's just, it's just not going to be your sharpest lens. My second dislike is there's a lot of chromatic aberration. If you don't know what that is, that's like the green and purple kind of uh, uh, coating or outline of objects with a high contrast. And I actually noticed that the second I started shooting with it, it might be because I was in this studio setting and there's quite a bit of contrast that happens. Um, actually, when I've been outside um, and shooting more real life um, stuff, you don't really see the chromatic aberration that much. But uh, definitely when you're like inside or uh, if there's a lot of contrast, um, you're gonna see that weird purple and green outline that happens. I've looked it up and not too many people have really discussed that about this lens. That might just be my version of the lens might have that problem, but this does generally show up when you have lower end lenses. Another sign that it's not the top tier lens is a thing called lens breathing. So what lens breathing is, for those of you who don't know, uh, when you focus, since it's it's not a zoom lens, you can't zoom at all, it's just a fixed uh, 50 length, which is pretty great when you're on an APS-C, it's more like 85, uh, still a really great focal length. Um, so when you're uh, manually focusing, actually even auto-focusing, it's all um, kind of the same. When you change the focus, it actually kind of like zooms in a little bit. I'll play a clip right here so you can understand what I'm talking about. But uh, when you are doing this uh, nice rack focus, um, you actually get a little bit of zoom in and out depending on what you're doing, which when I first uh, noticed that, I didn't notice it right away, but when I first noticed that, it was kind of like, oh, that's, that's a little weird. I'm not exactly sure 
why it's doing that. You're only gonna notice it when you're really up close to something, uh, like, a, like an object, again, when you're in a studio space um, and you're really getting critical focus um, that's when you'll see that the zoom changes. Personally, that's not too much of a problem. I'm okay with living with it, but I definitely say the 1.8 is probably gonna do the same thing with that uh, lens breathing. All right, so my final dislike would be the autofocus during photos. So I only noticed this last week, and I've been owning this for like six months now. Um, generally, I shoot video, and when you're doing video, you generally do like manual focus or actually the ADD is uh, has some fantastic dual pixel autofocus so I, I've never really had an issue um, especially since it's like so uh, shallow depth of field you can tell what is in focus even if it's you know not the sharpest lens um, but I, I was really surprised I was actually shooting some uh, theater pictures um, where there's a lot of high contrast and I was pretty far back um, but since it is an equivalent of an 85. The photos were like full body length or whatever. So I was using autofocus because it was like a live action thing and I didn't really have time to manual focus. Generally you don't have time to manual focus, uh, but when stuff is moving and you're not able to control the environment, I always use autofocus. Also, it's generally more accurate, but with this lens, I got no usable photos. It was definitely a good thing. I brought along my uh, 7200. That thing nailed it. But every single photo with the Nifty 50 1.4 were not in focus. Like some of them were really, really bad. Again, that could just be my lens. It was pretty dark in there, but I was shooting way open with the aperture. So that definitely was a mysterious problem. That's it for my rant about the 1.4. It's a great lens. And you know, generally I do more video than photos. Uh, so a lot of these uh, issues aren't gonna affect me too much, but if you're doing photos, those are some pretty critical things you might wanna think about before you pick up the 1.4. Once again, links are all down below. If you wanna pick up the 1.8, it's a fantastic deal, and apparently even, even sharper than the 1.4. Thank you for watching, and as always, don't forget to keep it pro.